This talk is from the Phage Genomics 2 lab, where we study the genomes of these phages that are isolated um, by the uh, Phage 1 students. And um, Lida Arnold and Aton um, Kojaki will be talking about investigating minor tail proteins and tail assembly chaperones in the L cluster mycobacteria phage in Celibus. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Aton Kojavi. I worked with Lida Arnold, and we're investigating minor tail proteins and tail assembly chaperone in L cluster mycobacteria phage Enceladus. We're part of the phage lab part two. So a bacteriophage is a virus that infects bacteria, and they can undergo two life cycles, lytic and lysogenic. And the lytic is when they infect and immediately kill all of the host as they replicate all of their functional proteins and structural proteins. And then the lysogenic is um, when it, it's integrated into the bacterial host genome and it just replicates with the host. So in Salatus, the specific one that we were investigating in this is temperate, which means that it undergoes both. So the structure of a phage is that it has this icosahedral head which this is where all of the genetic information is. So it has double-stranded DNA. And then the rest of the phage is just a mechanism to, of infection. So the tail is how it transports the DNA from the head into a bacterial host. And the tail fibers are how it attaches itself to the outer cell wall of a bacterial host. So we used bioinformatics tools in order to annotate and um, figure out the function of each of the genes that we were investigating. So DNA master was the actual mechanism of annotation, the program that identifies the genes, and then we identify the function of them using, in, using BLAST, which compares the genome sequences that we give it to other, to other genomic sequences, but typically we look for phage matches. Um, HH Pride compares the gene product structure with other organisms and will provide a 3D model of the functional protein. And then Synteny identifies similarity between gene products in certain areas of the genome based on the neighboring genes. And then Famerator compares entire genome sequences to suggest a function for a given gene. All right, so we specifically looked at genes 15 through 24. So on the left here, you can see genes 14 and 15 circled in blue. And there's a reason they're circled is because if you look up to the top, genes 14 and 15 up there are different despite the fact that their sequences are very similar and they're parts of the same cluster. We, uh, the group before us just talked about what a cluster was, but to reiterate, it's when you have 50% similarity and a subcluster is when you have 70% similarity. To the right of that is the tape measure protein. That's this long blue protein right here. And then in the red box is the minor tail complex. So they all are tail proteins and they're all right next to each other. So. Um, so going just, the, you can use the tape measure to determine a phages cluster based off on a recent study from 2015. Um, and they're able to do that because the tape measure protein is so important to the phages function and its ability to infect a host and reproduce because it determines the tail length of the entire shaft. So it's highly conserved within a cluster and in replication um, and just through evolution, it's highly conserved. Um, so there's little variation within a cluster. And so then the minor tail protein complex is also essential to survive and reproduce, but that's typical, it varies phage to phage and cluster to cluster, but it's about three to eight genes normally. Um, and so that's also highly conserved because it's vital to the function of a phage. So in this, we, we were investigating if it, you, just looking at the minor tail protein complex and the potential to determine a phage's subcluster, just looking at those rather than having to sequence the entire genome. Okay, uh, so for the L cluster phages, we see besides Enceladus, which is a draft, for the ones that have been annotated, we see this ribosomal frame shift. So a ribosomal frame shift occurs 
when, uh, when a ribosome hits a slippery sequence, you can see that in the pink right here, and it causes it to either reread or skip a base pair. So you're gonna have a minus one or plus one, a reread is a minus one, a skip is a plus one. When you have that, that causes a new frame for the rest of the gene. So if there's a stop codon, it might not hit that. It might have an early stop codon, it might have a late stop codon. Um, and so what ends up happening is that you have one start site, but you have two separate gene products that come from that same start site. So when you have that slippery sequence, you, it will occur about three to 8% of the time. And we were looking to see if we had that slippery sequence in our L1 cluster phage. So the first, the first sign that we had this uh, ribosomal frame shift in our gene was when we looked at the family members to see which, if that's like a popular, if the frame shift is popular in L cluster phages or if it's not. So on the left is the non frame shifting gene. There's only four members and they're all drafts, which means they haven't been actually annotated. So these might not even exist. On the right though, we have the frame shifting and there's 59 members. So more than likely, our gene is gonna be on the right and not the left, which means that we probably have a ribosomal frame shift in Enceladus. In addition to that, we looked at BLAST and we looked at the E values of the frame shifting gene. So an E value is the, is the random chance that these two, pro, that this product, this, this gene product and this gene product are the same just by chance. And so when you have these really low E values that the first one is two E to the negative 77th, that means that there's very light, that they're pretty much, uh, they're very similar. And what ends up happening is that we have a ton of really good hits with really low E values for our frame shifting genes. So, and they're all on L1 cluster phages as well, which means that this L1 cluster phage is extremely, extremely common, or this L1 cluster gene is very extremely common in other different types of phages, which means that it very likely could be an R phage as well. So in addition, oh, sorry, oh, no. Okay. In addition to that, we looked at the open reading frame down here, and as you can see, there's gene 14 of what we originally had that's in the green, and gene 15 is what we originally had that's one frame above. But we were able to determine that it's actually possible to have that frame shift happen so that we can go from 14 to 15. More than likely, we see this in a lot of other tail assembly chaperones, which is what these two genes encode for and that it's gonna be a minus one frame shift. So we also know that from other genes, it's likely gonna be about a 30 to one translation of the non frame shifting gene to the, trans, to the frame shifting gene. So now looking at the FAMREADER analysis of taking three sample phages from each of the four L subclusters, um, so looking just to orient you into what FAMERATOR does is the purple is 100% similarity between the two given genomes, um, which in a genome is indicated by this thing that looks like a ruler. Um, so they all have the same tape measure protein, which is this purple bar, um, because they're all in the L cluster. But then if you look right after that in each of these four figures, you can see that they have the same minor tail protein complexes, but then between like L1 and L2, they're not the same. Um, so that supports that you could use just the minor tail protein complex to determine a phage's subcluster rather than using the whole genome. But then if you look at this green circle down here, you can see that there's a gap in the purple. Um, so that's saying that there's a difference in the minor tail protein complex for this phage Bromden. So, which is shown bigger here. And so because Bromden is different than the other two phages that are in this subcluster, which one of them is a draft, um, it suggests that Bromden might not actually be in the L4 subcluster. And these are the only three phage in the L4 subcluster so far, because it's, I think, the newest of the four subclusters. So um, based just on this gap, I, I would, suggest that Bromden is actually not an L4 sub subcluster phage and that as more phage are annotated and identified, there will be others that it's more similar to and maybe it'll be in like L5 or L6 once those are determined. Uh, so all in all, what we concluded is that the minor tail protein complex is really good comparison for distinguishing subclusters. 
and that there's very, very likely a minus one frame shift in our L1 cluster phage at gene 14 or 15. So what we want to do for the future for clustering is we want to expand this to other subclusters and clusters and not just use the L cluster. And for the frame shift, we'd want to use an SDS gel and a Western blot to see if we get two separate pro gene products from the same start site. And then here are our references. And we want to say thank you to Dr. Philman, Dr. Guild, MCB 2161, faculty and students, and HHMI C phages for all your help throughout the semester. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Philman. Do you want to? Well, we don't have any questions. But... There's no questions? Okay. Uh, Brian. There's no questions. I was going to jump in. So, um, <laughs> so I was curious if uh, you talked about different um, uh, protein products or gene products from um, your your genome from specific phage. Does the the abundance or significance of these different profiles or ability to create different products indicate um, an increased or decreased um, organism uh, or targeted organism profile? As in, can they infect more or less um, different strains? of bacteria. Um, oh, yeah. okay, I'll get, I'll get this one. Uh, so we think that the frame shifting gene, because it's so common in all these phages is integral to the gene or integral to the, the phage. So in order for it to infect the genome, we would want more and more of that larger frame shifting gene. So the higher rate of that and the higher rate of that frame shifting gene from that gene prop from that like start site would probably mean that there would be a greater rate of infection, especially since the tail is extremely important in the infection of this, of the, like the transport of the DNA through the phage. Cool, thank you. That work. Right, in the chat, we have a question. Could the difference in the minor tail protein be due to co co-inhabitation with phages from a different cluster? Um, so the similarities between like the minor tail proteins are from like, ho like horizontal integration over evolution. Um, so a phage is way more closely related evolutionarily to a phage within its subcluster, which is why they would have the same minor tail proteins that have developed over, you know, however long. Are there any other questions? All right, I will pass it over to Gretchen, I believe, and the uh, drug discovery class. 